so much fun. Well, welcome back to my channel, Mispronounced Adventures. My name's Alex, and welcome to Nordic Arctic Round 3. And welcome to Northern Finland. So this is going to be a bit of a admin and upgrades episode. I've had a busy few weeks so far. Minus 38. Time to form Get up warm. a wee bit. Even though the camera froze and stopped. Uh, time for a little bit of downtime and to do a few needed upgrades to the van. So let's get into it. Right, well, first off, I kind of want to show you one of the upgrades I did to the van before I came out. The one which delayed me by leaving the UK for about four or five days. So it's not that cold this morning, so the engine should just start, no problem. Go. We'll put the preheater on actually anyway, just so I can get that heated up the engine quicker to defrost the cap. But yeah, let me show you one of the upgrades I did to the van before I left. Although I just need to move over slightly just so I can actually get it out. That should be moved over enough. So, first upgrade I did to the van before I left was I wanted to add a bike slide. So I unlock the van. with. So last winter I brought up my little My Rider. Which is a great bike I like and I've done some silly things on it now. Um, like riding from Fort William to Inverness in a day. Seventy six point eight mile and it's twenty to midnight. But it didn't work very well in the snow. So reached out to Himoy, which I haven't actually released a video for yet, and they gave me the Himoy Cobra, which is a fat tire e-bike with 26 by 4.8 inch wheels. And I thought, big wheel, be good snow. And before people go, oh, e-bikes, you can't use e-bikes, the battery will be decreased in the winter. Probably, but every single ski centre and stuff up here seems to do fat e-bike rental. So that's what I was going to do. The bit I'm actually particularly proud about is our uh, I haven't done anything on bikes before and I've got some folding handlebars so it actually fits nicely in the van. Pretty happy with that. Relatively easily slides back in. But the reason this took so long is I had to figure out a lot of stuff on the inside and I'll show you that. Just whilst we're here, I'll show you an upgrade I did years ago to the van, which I don't think many people actually know I did. On these back windows, because of the way they're single glazed, and you've got your bead of sealant, and then sort of the metal rim on the inside of the van, I found that this area filled up with condensation or water. So I put a little, tiny little hole, and then a, I put a wall plug, basically it's a plastic straw, and that just allows any condensation which appears to drain out and run down the back of the van. So a great little uh, upgrade, a bit of hole so any water which gathers in the bottom of your window can drop out. Now that they were back inside the van, let me show you what changed slightly. So this area is pretty similar as it was before, only this cab that comes out about another four or five centimeters, which I found you don't really feel a bit of a difference. And the whole cabinet itself has been rebuilt. The only thing which is the same is the bed system on the top. And if you've not seen my van before, it's got a fold down bed system. And even used the same panel at the bottom. But I wanted a bike slide 
which allowed me to still access all of my equipment. So I don't want to have to, I want to get to my toolbox. I don't want to have to stop the van, open the back doors and pull the bike out. So I made that work. So just having a view from this angle, bikes in the front and a lot of my storage is behind. And whilst it looks like I have lost a lot of storage, I found out I haven't really lost that much. I'm just actually utilizing the space which was there a lot better now. So that is all packed back there, opposed to all the free space which there was. Accessing all the stuff at the back. Lift up the top panel. I'm gonna open the cupboard, which is also the bike store, um, helmet store as well. And you can physically pick up the bike. It's not necessarily the easiest of maneuvers, the bike does pop out in that certain direction and then I can get in the gap there and normally I do it where the camera is. Get actually under and behind the bike and easily access what I need to. I thought that was a reasonably elegant solution. Reuse one of the old doors that now has the helmet sit on the back of it and it's quite easy to get in there. I am going to put on some hard wearing material on the bottom of that side. It's got the toolbox, spare diesel heater which is an all-in-one suitcase star one, engine preheater, a lot of my other bits from crampons, ropes, avalanche kit, recovery kit, snow chains, cables, extra hot warm clothing, sleeping bags, tent, all that sort of stuff. That all lives in there. Pull out the retaining bars, I can grab it. I don't have to open the back doors of the van, which was one of my requirements for making it fit. It is all very tightly fit, but this bike is huge. I mean, there aren't many bikes in the market which have 26 inch by 4.8 inch tires. So hopefully being well, all my other bikes should fit a lot easier. And the way that works is just because there's a fork mount which holds the forks in place and the bike is actually just pivoting on the fork body mount. And still got some lighting in there as well. I think that's quite a good solution. Not completely perfect. There's a few little upgrades I'm gonna to do to it whilst I'm here. But let's put everything back. Clearance isn't too bad. I've taken this rear chassis off, the rear framing off this because just there was no space. With the fold down, the fold up handlebars, fits about two centimeters. And being a really long bike, it just about fits there. The seat is the main issue for getting the bike in and out. The seat's in the way. I don't want to take the seat off every time, but I find if you just turn it around, it does actually come out quite easily. So yeah, that is the new bike tray system. And if I'm not using the bike at all, I can just put some extended trays in and just have back to my full storage. I forgot to point out where the other tire goes. Um, fits quite nicely in there. And there you go. And still, strong as it ever was. So, upgrades and changes. One, this isn't being very helpful or useful, this space here, and I'm gonna fix that. And the minute I've lost a little bit of my larger stuff space, so, my two empty rucksacks just kind of live down there. But big empty panel, it's gonna to go to one of the hardware shops and I'm gonna buy some hooks. So I can just hang things I want off there, probably those rucksacks, it'd be quite a nice spot just to get them out of the way. Another upgrade, I kind of want to cover the bike itself, or at least the cavity. And these are one of my old window covers from the van. Some of the early videos, you may have seen these when the were magnetic. Turns out they're still the same color palette I used with the van. And this one actually fits pretty perfectly without without modification right in that slot so i might go for some hooks if i can hook it up there acts as insulation so i don't have to waste heat in that area and covers the visual cavity of having a bike there for me i'm happy with how it turned out it didn't require much modification to the bed apart from rebuilding the entire cabinet visually still looks pretty much the same and now more utility for having bikes if anyone had seen some of the bike relating videos i'd put out transporting the e-bikes up to Scotland was a pain in the ass. They just had to sit directly in the middle of the van here. And all they did was just bounce off stuff and ruin my posters and ruin my woodwork and just generally be in the way. I couldn't access the big, long, useful workbench and the reason I built the van like it is. So I actually really like this design. And I think for the next van as well, I'm gonna do a very similar design to it again. Maybe just tweaking this whole principle, but having the e-bike in the front and all, and still a big cavity of storage in the back, even when I don't have a garage, is fine. And all the stuff which stays in the back of that cupboard isn't, isn't stuff which needs to be accessed all the time. I mean, much like if you've got a fixed bed at the back of your van and a garage, that is stuff in your garage and stuff you wanna access all the time. The cabinet here and the big double cab drawers here are my grab stuff all the time sort of storage. So. We might be popping into a hardware shop and buying some hooks and a few bits to 
finish this area off a bit. Right, about to leave, and I've just remembered this is one of the other upgrades I need to do today. Is this is a Joby Grip Pro piece of crap. Um, I've used, I've had about four of these, and they're great for mounting the phones. They're really strong, strong spring. This the plastic is just absolutely terrible. All of mine just crack and snap. Before I left, I ordered a new one off Amazon, and this one is now well and truly ruined. And this is quite important. This is how I film most of the channels. So when you see me doing front racing views, it's like it's just the camera mounted there. Everything got a bit weird. The phone mounted there, and then I spin it around to point towards me when I'm doing talky bits. And. Uh, or the front facing camera to point me. Time to get a move on to Rumaniemi Airport. The actual design would be, is good, it's just it's, the plastic is so brittle. I've had new ones just up, just shatter immediately in this stress point here, or this point here. So time to finally, hopefully put in a new one and get rid of this piece of rubbish. And here's one I bought off Amazon from a unknown Chinese company and seems to make an infinitely better product than this piece of crap by well-known brand Joby. This is metal, You've also got a cold shoe mount, also does, this is hard to do one-handed, uh, portrait as well as landscape. A few extra mountain holes for different sizes. Yeah, very happy. Let's see how well it performs. That's the model if anyone wants to know. And it's large enough to accommodate my phone, which is a uh, iPhone 14 Pro Max with an Otterbox Defender case on it, which makes it bigger, a bit bigger than most normal ones. So let's give it a little twirl. No. Right. Uh, we're going to need to move this up a wee bit. There we go. All mounted up. Are you happy with that? And seems to fit pretty snug in there. Next up, a few planned. I'm gonna do my best to keep a lot of the Arctic series, not to have any full collaborations in it. Any full collaboration video, I will do as a dedicated video for the collab, which is what I did last year. I think last year when I did the EcoFlow one, sort of showed me building up to doing the EcoFlow stuff, and then did a separate EcoFlow video. I might do a few integrations. I say I might, I'm literally about to do an integration. <laughs> So these are guys reached out to me and they make internet solutions for vans. And at the time I've used a Hawati E5577 router for the last couple of years and it's, it's worked fine. It does, however, not have any, I don't have an external antenna installed for it and that's a bit of a drawback for me. And I'm always looking into new technology and new options. This company contacted me out of the blue and they offered me their 4G mobile camper van kit and a puck antenna. So I'm thinking I'm gonna install that. Nowadays, it's a bit more important to me as well as my YouTube stuff. I've also do remote work for Vroma. So I do quite a lot of consultations on video calls. And because my current router doesn't have an antenna plugged in, I kind of occasionally move it into the cab because it gets better signal. So if I could have an antenna on the roof, that would be fantastic. But we'll install that a bit later because I need to get going for the day. So um, I guess go on with today's driver down to Ulu. Right, where am I off to? I'm currently going to Ulu and to go see my friend and channel subscriber Mika and I, th I think he's one of the original channel subscribers, to be honest. Even before the first European trip, even the so four trips ago. And every time I've been up here, I've, I've met up. He's a van builder in the Finland, got a pretty cool Iveco. And conveniently, he's also allowed me to use his address to order a few components as well, which is nice. So, so I may have done a collaboration, which will be a separate video. But we all know I like me lighting on my van. Lots of light, front lights. Under lights, side lights, back lights, all the lights. My big main roof bar and potentially the front lights as well, uh, I'm gonna replace. Is there anything wrong with my current 52 inch light bar? No, it's bright, it's been fine for the last two years. Paint's getting a bit tatty uh, from some corrosion on, on, on the speed camera ahead. Thank you very much. Paint's getting a little bit bubbly on some of the areas where like the 
Aluminium's corroded underneath. But I got a message from... In about 10 miles, at the roundabout, take the second exit onto Nellisty. But I got a message from a lighting company called Colight, and they make some nice light bars. And I managed to wangle a 52-inch light bar off them to replace the one I've got. Why would I want to replace one 52-inch light bar with another one? Well, this one I noticed has got a different design. It's a, like a flat glass plate in the front, which I see quite a lot here actually, you know, on a lot of the Nordic vehicles, which I think will be good to stop ice which gets caught on the little lip on the current one. They also made the point that it's European legal reg, and it's got DRL running daylight, daytime running lights, and I like my lights and I want a little orange light strip or yellow light strip on the light. So I've agreed to it, we're going to go get it. There will be a separate video of me installing it, but you'll see it. Well, there'll be a separate video because I've got to fulfill my whole agreement with them and hopefully get some other lights sent up here this winter. Oh, and then to carry on the nice guy theme, um, I've also brought an, e an Eco part up from the UK. So I think that is the final package I've been couriering up for people. I had some stuff from Ash and Marie, well just Ash really with a chainsaw and a quad bike part. I had bits and bobs for Alex and Jess and I've got a bit for an IV coat makeup, so yeah. He used my address in the UK, I used his. Right, that is the rather large Iveco daily I've come to see. That's a good and huge fan. Right, look around some of the shops with Mika, a bit of food. Now I'm gonna go over to another shop, just have a Right, a couple hours spent with Vika and took me to a few local stores. So I'm currently at a Motonet uh, to get a few parts. Right, a little haul of parts. Got my light bar, dropped off for the van parts I brought up for Mika. Needed some cable for the wiring. We only need for right wiring switches and relays, so actually it's just a four core thin stuff because I only need it to run from a fuse box at the back to some switches at the front. Need a step drill for a project. Needed a few fuses. I actually nearly need a 15 amp fuse because I've managed to pop one of my ones. Five prong relay and some terminal connectors for the switches. Let's have a quick look at the light bar. Right, filmed my little intro video to film a little bit for the actual collab video, but tell you what, this thing is pretty bright. That is. Oh my eyes. That is very bright. But the main reason I wanted it is because I'm a child and I wanted DRL. So I've got my cool little line. Right, I'm getting quite tired, so the minute. Currently driving for about an hour to get towards Kimi and a bit north towards Romaniemi again. I'm gonna find a park up and do a couple of hours of couple of hours of editing tonight, and then do some of my projects on fitting bits and bobs to the uh, to the van tomorrow. off the road. I didn't overshoot that. I slightly overshot that. Huh. It's quite busy. One, two, three, four, five. It's quite a few cars here. Uh, decided I'm going to move on. Just a busy car park, really. I'd rather not take up space if I want to edit loads tomorrow and if there are people wanting to go for local walks and stuff, I'm 
I'll just carry on and um, you know, carry on a little bit further up the road. So following day, I've got some Roma calls to do today. I've been editing already for a couple hours, so that's mostly done. And I want to do a few other bits and bobs of little little jobs I need to do on the van. So let's crack on with it. All right, one of the little admin projects. I want some hooks on this panel to make it useless, from useless to useful. So some of the supermarkets just stock, stock some little fake brassy colored hooks and well, mounted on there quite nicely. Should be able to hang the rucksacks. There we go, it hooks installed. I can now make some space and hang the bags up. Excellent. One job done. Right, finished with my Roma calls today, and it's above zero. I think it's 1.4 degrees, which means all of the dirty ice and snow for the last few weeks has just dropped off the van. Ooh. That's a lot of dirty marks. That's... Bit of coolant dropping off as well. Well, so I'm on the outskirts of Roman Yemi. I'm about to go pick up my partner Joe from the airport. Uh, she's coming out and joining me for 10 days. Um, so I've just been chilling in a lay-by. And now I am completely and utterly boxed in in a lay-by by Northern Light Hunters. Like, I was parked across a lay-by because it was empty and now I am absolutely boxed in. They're everywhere, so I need to do a million point turn to try and get out. I mean, they're all over there on the frozen lake, but it's cloudy, there's no Northern Lights. I don't even know what they're looking at. What other admin projects can I do? This, this has run out of power, so I can take that off the wall, put new batteries, but I've got an annoying feeling the outside receiver, which is on the roof rack, is also out of power, so I'm gonna have to go outside and plumb on the roof to do that. Also, if anyone wonders, the reason there's a lump on this is because that's the light button, so when you, it's in the dark, you can feel along the bottom and you press the button directly above it. If not, you end up changing the sink or the history or to Fahrenheit, whatever Fahrenheit is. Uh, I did well and truly stick it on here, didn't I? Really hell. Right, I do need to uh, do the other one. Too bad to get hold of, so put some new batteries in that and uh, climb back on the roof again. They're bugs. They were, there were bugs living inside this. Oh well, I mean they were, it's minus... It was above zero at the minute, so it's not a problem. I'm not just making... Moment of truth. Channel 2. You want to work for me? Hey, there we go. Working, right. Gibble tyres and get this back up again. Just to show you a little example. Also, cool little step thing. So it just cable ties onto the back of uh, there, really. I can't believe my solar panels are actually completely clear. I mean, they are filthy, but uh, 
There's no ice on them at all. And I've got to swap out that in a, soon as well. And that's going to be the end of this episode. I kind of ran out of time in what I needed to fit before I had to go get to the airport. So I've got the light bar now and I've got the internet and I'm going to have to set them up in a different episode um, when I've got time. But thank you very much for joining me. Do consider subscribing to the channel, leaving a like and a comment, checking out the rest of Arctic Series 3 or Arctic Series 1 and 2. And other ways you can help support the channel is look at some of the links in the description. I work for Roma, which is a British lithium battery company, and I've got an affiliate link for their batteries. I use their Extreme Series batteries in, in my van, and I also do their electrical design consultations. I'm a brand ambassador for Autoterm, and Amazon links and a bunch of other stuff. But really, I just want you guys to enjoy the content. So thank you very much for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.